What would this episode be if we didn't do an experiment? Oh God! Yeah, let me uh, let me grab my jacket. Oh real quick. no! <laughs> One moment. Scares me. Well, while he's doing whatever, I'm going to answer another question. PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Historically, what percentage are your members are old souls or new souls? So the majority of PETA are actually old souls. Um, the president of the United States, are you an old soul or a young soul? Now the current president is an old soul. Uh, most of the presidents are old souls. Okay. These are very interesting questions. Um, I have no idea what Florencia 13 is. I got got a clue, but what percentage of Florencia 13 is old soul? Hardly any. Most of it is young soul. Oh, he's back. Okay. What's the experiment? Well, first of all, what is Florencia? Can we ask them what they are? What is Florencia 13? It's some sort of a criminal outlet. No. No. Whatever. Um, Okay, really quick, let's actually touch touch on this subject. Can you ask uh, maybe Buddha if these life wave X39 patches work? Do the life wave X39 patches work? No. What are these? So you remember how we had a conversation about those... Um, uh, it was like a frequency thing. Um, apparently, you put these on your skin, and they like, I don't know, change your frequency. It says patented phototherapy is designed to elevate a peptide known as enhanced stem cell, known to enhance stem cell activity. Is that correct? No. I've never heard of these. How did you find out? Uh, well, I mean, we have a viewer who is uh, interested in this subject because they also heard of the Healy, which we mentioned recently. Mm -hmm. The only way you could really do something like this is the, the, the change in vibrational frequency has to come from somewhere. Now, what is interesting is I was speaking with uh, Elisa from channeling Eric and she was telling me that she learned that the scalar energy can tr carry information on the waves. Okay. And I found that very fascinating. So of course I asked, can the scalar energy carry information on the waves? And I got to know. However, she's not wrong. What the scalar energy does is the information seems to be attached to it. So yeah. it's not physically carrying it as if like it's on its shoulders, but yep. the scalar energy will find who it's intended for and then deliver the information. Does that make sense? Yes. We, what you're, the essence of this statement is that you have to be pinpointing your definitions because, you know, carrying implies a physicality. So, you know, it's, it's about your definitions and almost everything that we do with all of our, uh, non-spiritual guests have to do with being very accurate in our definitions. Oh gosh, all the time. But I thought that was interesting to find out exactly how Scalar takes that information. So 
if you think of the, say the wave from me to you, right? That's a very big wave. Say I have a scalar and that scalar wave is stretching all the way to you now. Yeah. And, and the way I perceived it was that all of that information would be stretched along that entire wavelength. But actually, the information, the wavelength is just to find where you are. So it goes to the right person and then the information is delivered. I just found that really fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I totally understand the sentiments of uh, trying to figure out the wavelength for information. But, um, oh Lord, anyways, I'm That's outside awesome. and we're ready for our experiment. Okay, oh God, don't tell me you're standing next to an alien. Well, that'll be your call. Um, <laughs> but um, what I want to do is channel Bashar mm -hmm. from who channels through Daryl Anka. Okay. Can you get a hold of Bashar? Yes. Um. So unfortunately, that is not Daryl Anka, but uh, okay. Well, there's not Daryl. Um... That's him. Yeah, here he is. Anyways, so there's these experiments that happen in Arizona, and there's this guy, and he he projects his consciousness into a certain spot in the sky and he is able to manifest um, orbs of light. Um, alien phenomena. And from the conversations that Bashar has, Bashar would simply say that you're not just seeing them. You're simply, uh, transcending yourself into a higher vibration we're able to see them because they're always there in the first place that's interesting because i see a lot of orbs yeah well can you verify that with bashar uh, because, what was the question again if if the um Aerial phenomena is always there, and it just depends on your vibrational state if you can see it or not. That's correct. Okay. So here's the experiment. Um, I'm looking at the Big Dipper, and it should be the easiest thing for an alien to manifest itself in the center of the Big Dipper. We, we we try to do experiments on this Mr. Robot probe session. So <laughs> can you ask um, Bashar if he or any one of his friends can manifest a light orb for me to confirm his psychic uh, conversation with us right now? I don't think it's going to be in the Big Dipper. I think it's going to be closer to you. Well, that'll be fine. It sounds really cold outside. The sound of the cold. That is a topic for another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you sound cold. Um, Definitely cold. Can you manifest a war, please, to in front of Mr. Robot? It's, is he at a vibrational level where he can see? You're not at a vibrational level where you can see it, but it's right next to you. Yeah, so that's the unfortunate part about what Bashar talks about is that they're so vibrationally abo above us from his perspective mm -hmm. that they kind of assume that we just really won't see it for like, a very long time. So uh, how close does he say he is? He's right next to the right side of your head. Hmm. Yeah, well, ask him to lower his vibration. <laughs> to, 
<laughs> to meet human or ch- tell him to validate his uh, existence for the sake of this podcast. He's right next to you. Did you feel some warmth just then? Uh, Ask him what he thinks I look like right now. See if we can do a little verification. Like where's Waldo? (laughs) May or may not be accurate. Uh, Does he have any (laughs) celestial friends in the sky, though, that... I'm I'm looking for a real event, and I feel like because the reason I'm bringing this up is because you mentioned that for a Sasquatch mission to mm. be successful or an alien mission to be successful, they would need a true live psychic with them. So that's the premise of this experiment. Yeah. Every time we go out on a Sasquatch Sasquatch mission, well, I would say 75% of the time, it was successful. Aliens aliens just tend to appear, as well as the orbs and ghosts and all of that. Um, I was asked to join a ghost hunting group, and I said, hell no, I will not go. Why because not? I don't want them to come home with me, right? Because, oh, wait, here she is. She's turned up. We can talk to her all day long, and she can see us, and we're just going to hang out with her all the time. I'll, no. I'll, mail, I'll mail you some sage. Yeah, really. Um, they're right next to you. You're next. You're near. I see a fence. Is there a fence there? Uh, I am next to a fence made of uh rocks it's a rock wall yeah there's there's a fence i see and there's also like a wooden structure what is that wooden structure mm, a um i don't know what you call it it's a cabana or yeah that's what whatever. i see I almost described it as a carport, but I wasn't sure. Oh, yeah. I know that's, but for people. <laughs> right. Okay. A, a now, bearing in mind, you're, you're over a thousand miles away from me. So, and I've never been to your house and I've never seen photographs of your house. You've never seen photographs of my house. Um, but I can imagine it. I imagine you living in a uh, grassy area with trees and, bunch of people with uh shotguns shotguns i was going to say <laughs> guns <laughs> you you read my mind yeah um but for you i de- he they're there okay but tell them you know there's this whole vibrational uh uh imbalance in the conversation and and uh, that's not what this co- this channel is all about. We're we're trying to validate their existence. So you know, there's some LED lights in my garden. Um, they should be very easily um, uh, I don't know what the word is. Uh, mess with by easy to appear. I mean, I can see them. They're there, but. I feel like you were going to have to work on a vibrational level, right? Yeah. I've been I've been around people that have felt experiences and they're right next to me. However, I was able to actually see the orbs or the experiences and they weren't, but they could feel them. Now, I can firmly tell you on your right side, that is where Bashar is standing. And I I keep telling him to breathe some warmth over you. And I feel like there is a warm energy to your right. Well, so think of me 
um, as my audience wouldn't really believe that I am really the uh, um, the female character in the uh, what's that like Area 51 show um, uh, X-Files Scully? Yeah, I am basically the Scully and I will always present a completely unbiased uh, like scientific perspective and I don't see or feel anything next to me, but I, I do feel energy in general. Mm -hmm. So it should be very easy for me to feel something. Okay. And actually, you know, what's interesting is one of our conversations, um, or one of our probes, I was leaving this very vicinity when a non-physical being um, scraped its like hands maybe through my hair and that was a very real experience I'm kind of looking for something as real as that <laughs> okay maybe you should go inside <laughs> <laughs> because you know, it's difficult when you're outside and it's cold oh, right for sure I thought you meant like I'm about to get abducted. <laughs> I thought you meant that. <laughs> so that I would never advocate that somebody stands outside like you're nutty. Like really, no. I know you, but I would never advocate that somebody stands outside trying to communicate with aliens because of the <laughs> sheer dangerous nature of what can happen when you do that. Yeah. Right. You're basically, they can hear you. You just don't have the, um, <laughs> The tools and the equipment to communicate with them, right? But they can communicate with you. So now you're freaking me out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I would never stand out there and say, Here I am for the taking, please. Oh my god, you wouldn't you wouldn't believe my history. I, I literally used to just sit outside in a chair at night and just be like, come and get me. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> well, but doesn't surprise me about you. Um, I just, you know, I I have a lot of conversations to have with them. So I'm sure you do, but you can have those conversations without sitting outside in the middle of the desert <laughs> waiting for an well, alien to abduct you. <laughs> You know, if, if they need a little DNA, they can have it, whatever. Oh, Lord. You're scaring me now. If this <laughs> robot should disappear after this probe, you all know why. All right. I'm back in the vicinity of a warm, casual room. So, Bashar, is he still in the presence? Yes. Is he still looking very alien-like? No. What does he look like right now to you? A human. So, okay, so the reason why I talked to Bashar is there's a lot of people who kind of don't like Bashar and whatever. But... The reason why Bashar is interesting to me is because he is um, created from the DNA of humans mixed with the DNA of the greys. Can you confirm that with it, Bashar? That is correct. Yeah, so there are like four or five subhuman races which the greys used our DNA so you know typical grey whatever um, who by the way are us in the future with reproductive problems but um, I I count on the Asasani rays so often because they are essentially humans with a very fast thinking, very 
psychically engineered. They are engineered um, uh, way of existence. So uh, uh, there's actually a really cool fact I want to talk about. Can can you ask Bashar about the person on his planet? Who connected everyone's minds via telepathy? That's correct. What did this moment in time do for their civilization? I'm sorry, what was that question? What did this moment in time do, do for their civilization? Nothing. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about the moment in which all of the uh, entities on their planet all of a sudden all became um, psychically aware of each other's thoughts. What happened at this moment in time? I'm sorry, the thing cut out. Uh, what happened to this moment in time? everybody became they've always been like that they've never not been like that so um in bachar in bachar's channels he mentioned that there's a moment in time in the essasani race when there was a great unification when there was one individual on their planet that connected all of their brain frequencies can you ask him if that was a correct statement? That is correct. Was that before his time? Yes, long, long, long before. Yes. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, um, was that individual something like our Jesus? No. Just another alien. It was almost like their god. Yeah. So, anyways, there was a there's a planet, or whatever, Essasani, and uh, an individual connected everyone's brains, and everyone from there forth was uh, communicating telepathically. Can you confirm that with Bashar? Sorry, repeat that question to me. Um, if there was, a, uh, I feel like I already mentioned it a while ago, but like if there was in fact a moment in their time when an individual on their planet linked everyone's mind up telepathically. It was just access to the all-knowing. But once you have the all-knowing, it's just is, right? Okay. It becomes it becomes a place of numbness, right? So where people, I guess, if we all had this all-knowing information here on Earth, you would think that everybody would be jumping for joy or celebrating, but you don't. It's just is. You just become is. It's like, why celebrate triumph? Why celebrate an occasion when everybody else is doing this, you know, has the same ability? And, and yeah. the reason we have celebrations is to mark a unique, time or place so like you know birthdays or anniversaries or triumphs or you know getting that job or uh graduations or weddings and things like that but if everybody yeah. has access to the all-knowing all of that stuff becomes irrelevant you know i'm so glad that you mentioned that because it really validates that we're talking to bashar because uh Bashar says that they, since they have half, I mean, you know, 
for the sake of conversation, let's just say half half human and then, and then half uh, gray uh, DNA, mm -hmm. that they are evolving about a thousand times faster than us. And what they said is that their reality is shifting very quickly and they're trying to understand a higher dimension above their own because, you know, their own identity, you know, it's kind of like our own right now where, you know, the most enlightened being on our planet is just focusing on the um, state of nirvana. Mm -hmm. um, the most enlightened being on their planet is reaching a level of being that involves itself with the idea of nothingness and somethingness and uh he actually has a video about that but anyways um back to our experiment we're in a warm environment <laughs> yeah can bashar present himself in this warm environment Okay, they're relying upon me to send them over. Okay, so All I'm right, gonna send I will, them over. I'll open the biofield. Okay. I'm sending I'm sending them over. And I feel like you receive information around the heart and the chest area. Do you feel anything? Well, I will open. I'm in a deeper Zen Zen med meditative state. I can open up my chakras. But but um are they here? <laughs> yes. Yes, they're there. The other thing that they were saying is the fact that or Bashar was saying, which is a collective. Their ascension is being able to be free from the universe. So actually leaving this universe for good and traveling to a better universe. It makes perfect sense to me. Do you feel them? They're right in front of you. Well, um, you know, I don't, but on that note, I would like to explain um, a aside to the audience is that I can feel things that are higher dimensional, and I feel energy from the higher dimensions, but um, the only way I'd really be able to tell if there was anything near me is if they gave me a huge burst of energy honestly to tell you the truth okay did you feel that you know i don't know your mind gets in the way and i might have felt something but uh so the problem is is the instant the instant Taity, the instant nat that instant nature of this telepathy telepathy. Um, <laughs> and how much have you had to drink tonight? No, I'm teasing. Well, the, I'm just saying, like, mm -hmm. if anyone has ever seen K Pax, are you familiar with the scene when he represents his powers in K Pax? Yeah. It's a really good movie. There is a scene where the whole plot, oh, I can summarize it very quickly. This guy, he's just walking around. He's looking at everything like awestruck. And then they arrest him because he's like, he looks crazy or whatever. And uh, he goes to a mental institution and he's trying to prove to the scientists that he's from a different planet. And at one point he 
projects himself to the other side of the room and then back. But it happens in a fraction of a second. So they, you know, think he's lying. But the point of the conversation is that, you know, they told you that they're going to do something and then you ask me. But at the point in which they tell you that they're doing something, they already did it. So I, I think I noticed it at that moment. Yes. Awesome. That's really cool. It was a very minute thing, though. And I'm, I'm looking for, like, you know, a bigger thing. And, and, and that's what I want to do is some experiments on this channel. Mm hmm Well, if anybody has any idea of experiments or if whatever you want to do, Mr. Robot. <laughs> Contact Mr. Robot. You've been getting a lot of emails lately, haven't you? Yeah, but you know what? Uh, some of them go to my spam. So um, if you don't hear back from me in about one week, um, send me another email. Or tag him on the Discord. Prefer, um, yeah, preferably Discord. I, it's much easier. It is. It is much easier. So uh, if anybody does want to make contact with Mr. Robot, moongrass777 at gmail.com. I think this was really interesting. We covered a lot of topics. I still want to go back in and do another manifestation video covering all those questions and all those people that were in those, you know, in those questions, maybe yeah. probing them. And finding out if their technique is actually valid. Some of those people mm -hmm. had passed away. So I think we could channel them. We can mind probe them. We can find out what's going on. And just remember, just because something uh, works for one person doesn't necessarily mean it works for everyone. You know, it, there, it's no, there's no uniformity here, right? CTT can work oh, sure. wonders and miracles for a lot of people. And some people, it just doesn't. They don't like the tapping. They don't like saying the negative words. Yeah. They don't, you know, they don't like the script. They don't like the, so that, and that's fine. There's no one surefire way that is, you know, the optimum manifesting tool that is uniform across the universe or across the globe. Um, if it was that simple, we'd all be doing it. Mm -hmm. I would like to look into blindfolded sight, if you know anything about that. If anybody does know anything about blindfolded sight, please email me at psychiclistcross at gmail.com or moongrass777 at gmail.com for Mr. Robot. What do you know about blindfolded sight? Do you remember when we recently probed that um, that young lady in India mm -hmm. and she, she put a blindfold on and she would read books? Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yes, it's similar to that. So, yeah, blindfolded sight. Uh, I want to know how it works and how we can better perfect it. I think that would be an interesting probe. Yeah. Oh. Third eye, third eye stuff, right? I don't know. I've never actually done it, but a lot of people in the remote viewing groups uh, are into blindfolded sight. So <laughs> it's really interesting. It's got to be third, third eye stuff. Yeah. Well, well I, apparently everybody can do it. So my, I'm thinking if I can learn blindfolded sight, Maybe with my psychic abilities, I can move forward in time and remote view the lottery <laughs> and, and blindfolded sight, remote view the lottery numbers. I don't know. It's worth well, a shot. Not that I actually care one way or the other. Well, I know you're extremely busy, but I feel like you should literally put a blindfold on and uh, just open a book up and... Um... And like a simple, you know, third grade level, like we we need the poo type thing, and and guess the page information, and then try to verify it with someone who's next to you. Yeah, 
I'll have to look into the technique, but if anybody does have any of those questions, please be sure to contact us. Anything else from you, Mr. Robot? Um, next time we will have a video camera aimed at the Big Dipper and we'll try to get a better reaction. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. This was a fun probe. Thanks a lot.